We're going to do some pretty straightforward volume to liquid conversions with ounces, tablespoonfuls, teaspoonfuls, and mLs. Again, this is memorizing pharmacy calculations, and what I want to do is just go over those things that you'd have to memorize to solve these kinds of problems. So this could first look a little bit confusing to see that we have ounces to tablespoonfuls to teaspoons to mLs, tablespoonfuls to teaspoons and mLs, and teaspoons to mLs. What I recommend is that you memorize the top lines. That is, one ounce is 30 mLs, one tablespoonful is 15 mLs, and one teaspoon is 5 mLs. Because what that does is it keeps you having everything equal to one common factor, the mL. So you can figure out all of the other ones, and I can put my pointer here. All of these can be derived if you know all three of these because you always have ml to ml to ml. Now practice problems. Change ounces to te tablespoonfuls, teaspoons, and mls. Where would we see this? So an adult patient has to take two ounces of a children's liquid medication three times daily because she can't swallow tablets. What is the amount of medicine in tablespoons, teaspoons, and milliliters? What's the best measure for precision and accuracy? So what we're really saying is the patient may not have something that measures ounces. Let's see if we can find something that's a smaller measure that will be more precise and more accurate. So if we have two ounces, and we know that one ounce is two tablespoonfuls, we would just multiply two ounces times two tablespoons to make four tablespoonfuls. If we have two ounces, then six teaspoons to one ounce, six teaspoons times two ounces makes 12 teaspoons. If we have two ounces times 30 mLs, that makes 60 mLs altogether. I should have capitalized that L. Now, in terms of precision and accuracy, we're going to get uh, more precise and more accurate the smaller we go, okay? Because uh, we can measure to the mL. And with the tablespoon, it's gonna be less precise and possibly less accurate than the teaspoon and then than the mL, okay? So, as we increase the number of gradations or graduations, um, those little lines on the side of the measurement, uh, we are in better shape. Uh, but it also might be inconvenient because if you have a 10 ml syringe, that means that this patient will have to draw 10 mLs, then, and I'm talking about the oral plastic syringe, not a syringe with a needle like for insulin, then the patient would have to do this six times. Whereas with four tablespoonfuls, they may have something that's a measure that they can um, just measure those four out. So again, it just depends. Here we have ounces to teaspoons and milliliters. So the physician orders the patient to take two tablespoonfuls of milk of magnesia. How many teaspoons would the patient need to take to follow the order? How many mLs would the patient take? So again, we're trying to uh, give them a conversion because maybe they don't have any kind of tablespoon at home. And we don't want them using kitchen measures, you know, the big spoon versus the little spoon. That's not how you measure medicine uh, accurately. So we have two tablespoonfuls, uh, and we multiply by our conversion of three teaspoonfuls to one tablespoonful to get six. And then if we have mLs, it's one tablespoonful is 15 mLs. So two tablespoonfuls times 15 makes 30 mLs. Okay. Uh, this last one. Child has to take one sixth of an ounce of a medication every four hours. You want to make sure to be precise so you can change so you change the quantity to milliliters. How many milliliters should the child take with each dose? Okay. And what we have is a situation where we really do want to be precise. It's a children's medication. Maybe the child is very small. And we see that if we have a sixth of an ounce, then we're going to take a sixth times 30 to get five mLs. And that's something we can measure very precisely and hopefully accurately.